you can see that this is the objective. We can add to dos. We can delete them. We can delete them. And we can refresh, and we have some. They automatically load. Okay. Okay. So this is a magic. We just delete everything and start over. That's doable. Okay. I refresh. We got nothing here. Okay. So what's the thing I just mentioned that we should be able to do? Or we should do. We want to see data. Okay, so let's go ahead and define an array of objects. What are these objects going to represent? To do's. Okay, to do's have values. What are some of their values? Or they have attributes. What are some of the attributes? One is done, the other is, uh, you know. Huh? You can call it active. I don't know. I, active works. I'm going to do done, okay? I'll just say done because I think it's, it's easier to type. So we go to school, have some coffee, and then we're going to, I don't know, write some code. Okay? I save it. I refresh. Nothing happens, guys. What can we do to fix this? Do I have something called to do's? Because we hard coded some data here. Well, I mean, look at what look, look what the key says. What does the key say? Done. Okay, so what, and what is this object? Go to school. What is the object? Um, to do. Okay, it's a to do object. This object represents a to do, right? And certain things about to dos happen, right? To dos have they're done or not. They have a body which describes them, etc. There are many different ways to write code, okay? I would prefer that you guys write code this way, to be honest with you. Start off with the data that you're working with. That will help your life be so much easier, okay? So, remember our app loads. What do we want to have happen? We want to render our to-dos. We need to show our user our to-dos. What's the point of typing in to-dos if we can't show it to them? Hmm? We need to be able to show our users to do's. So let's go ahead and define a function which will do that. And the key word that you guys need to, uh, you, sh you should think about here is called render. This is gonna be amazingly useful in React, okay? And as a matter of fact, there's a special function in React called the render function. And that's why anything that draws to the UI on the left right here, we call it a render function. So I'm gonna find a function called render to do's to do list, okay? Let me go ahead and fix the camel case. So what do we need to do here, guys? Come on, help me out. We need to add our to do's to the UI, right? Are we gonna do it all at once? No, we're going to do it one step at a time, okay? So the first thing we need to do is simply target our, uh, our uh, to do list, right? So I want you guys to also just look in your console. You can run a command. You guys should have this one memorized by now. Get element by ID. What's the element called? Yes, it's the, the UL. The element that we want to stick in is the, the element on line 21 through 23. The UL, the UL tag. So we're going to target it. I can see that I've successfully targeted, targeted it. I can also do what? I can also add stuff to it, right? Does that work? Okay, so we, get, we proved that this works, right? How many times do we want to run this command? One time? How many times do we run, want to run document.getElementById? One time? No, we, we want to run it once for every single, to, uh, every single to do, exactly. What if we had 20 items? Right. Remember what the, this is, I'm trying to show you what the, the objective of of, uh, of um of using a map is. Right. Can I do this right here? To do's uh, zero dot body. Can I do this? Would this work? I think it would work. Let's go ahead and call this function. If I save it and then I call the function inside the console, does that work? So think about this. Okay. On the right. We have a object, or we have an array in our to-dos, right? We also define a function called render to-do. What does render to-do do? 
It says, hey, let's find this to-do list item and then set the inner HTML as the first to-do's body. Can I do it this way? Would that work? So if I define it, I save it, I run it, what are we gonna see? Yes, we're going to replace it each time. So like this kind of works, but there's a bug, okay? The bug is we're constantly replacing what we have, okay? So now we're getting Google document, get uh, add to, JS add to document. I don't remember the command. I just kind of randomly Google sometimes. A pin child, that's what I'm looking for, okay? Fuck, we're always doing this one. God damn it. Hmm. Hmm. No, I forgot how I did this. I always forget how I do this. Is it end that join? Okay, so the object, the problem here, I remember how I saw this problem, right? Notice that we have three to do's. The last one is write some code, right? We ran this command three times. There are many, many problems with this code. What if I only have two to do's? What's going to happen then? it puts an empty string in there because there is no third to do, yeah. right? If I say, if I uncomment it, I save it, refresh. Oh, my bad, my bad. Let's go and call it, my bad, sorry. Okay, we uncomment this one, we save, refresh. Oh, my bad, it doesn't, it, it, this. Jesus Christ. Hmm, I expect to see nothing here. Oh, it, could, it threw an error before it, uh, before line, line 10, when it ran, it gave us a silent error, okay? The application did not turn red. The application did not become unclickable. We can still click things, right? We can still do this. It's called a silent error. These are very bad, okay? We, don't, we want as few errors as we can. And specifically, we don't want silent errors, okay? So just know that this code has problems, man. We can't constantly be doing this. What's the technique that we can do to run the same amount of code on everything? Map, we want to map, okay? So what do we want to map over, guys? Are we mapping over our girlfriends? Yes, we're mapping over our to-dos, okay? What's the argument that we give to map? Function. Yes, okay? What do we want to do in each one of these functions? Yeah, we want to look at each element. I could call it element here, I could call it item, but I think the best name would be to-do, okay? So then what we're gonna do here is we're going to, we're gonna say, hey, the to-do.body, let's return it. I know this is kind of this this return here is a little bit confusing, but the, but the next step is a crucial to rendering multiple of them. Okay, so if I do return here, right? Remember what we did yesterday. We're just running this code on each element. Remember these exercises that we did yesterday. We're running this code on each element, right? And then I'm just going to assign this to a variable. Go. Can anyone here tell me what go is going to be? What's go? Go is an array. Whoever said that, I think it was Quinn. Right? Right? Go is an array. If I type in go, if I type in type of go, what am I going to see? I'm going to see object. Oops. Okay, that console logged in. My bad. I didn't save it globally. Okay, so, so go is an array. So what we, the end objective, right, is to take this array. Oops. Take this array and stick it on the green screen. Yeah, okay. So what can we do? Well, the, 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 there's a special technique, right? This will save us. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I don't want you guys doing this one, okay? This technique right here is uh, not manageable. It's actually much more difficult long-term. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the simpler way to do this, right? So we're going to take our, we're gonna take our today do's, right? We're gonna map over them, and we just want one thing. What do we want from this to-do object? Body. Yes, we want the body. Remember, go to school, have anything in it, right? We want this one key right here, body, right there. That's the only piece of data that we're interested in right now. So we're gonna do, we're gonna call this our to-dos HTML. That's the most appropriate name, okay? And I want you guys to think about what to-dos HTML is again, right? It's just an array. So we need to join this array to make one really long string, and then we need to stick that string into our list right here, okay? Does that make sense? Does that make sense, everyone? Okay, so how can we do that? Okay, uh, why do we need to join it into a big, very string? 
Okay, cause so, so the, here, I'll show you what's gonna happen if I don't do that. Document dot get element by ID. What is it again? To do list, it's right to do list right here on line 21. We say, hey, we can do the inner HTML is equal to to do that HTML. What do you guys expect to see? It's one really long string, right? But now, what if I wanted this to be more complicated? What if I wanted this to be? Okay, my bad. I guess we don't need to to, to join it. Wow. Okay, that works. Never mind. I got way too complicated. So this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, I would say, and I would say Charles would probably say the same thing. Oh, my bad. Right here. This is why we're doing it. Right here. Okay, I was right. The reason why we want to join it into one long string is because we don't want to stick an array in there. Do you guys see what's going on right here? The array is split up with commas, okay? So now we want to use a technique called join. So we're gonna say, hey, this array of strings, I want to join them, okay? If I save it, you're gonna see these commas disappear. I save and the commas disappear, okay? All right, so. Um, we successfully figured out how to render to the screen, okay? Now we want to do more. I want to do much more than this. I want to be able to do what? Um, so can you go back to line nine? Okay. Uh, it's in the render function. And you, what, is, what, what do you do there exactly? So right here, let's just look at our to-do's, console.log to-do's. Okay, and then we'll console.log our to-dos HTML. Okay, we'll save it, refresh it. What's the difference between the to-dos here and the to-dos here? The first one, it shows commas. No, let's talk, let's talk about the, the uh, let's talk about the data. What is the difference between to-dos and to-dos HTML? The difference is, is that on the top, the to-dos are objects, right? I cannot stick an object on the screen. What happens when we try to stick an object on the screen? We have a bunch of objects on the screen. I don't know what that is. A user is damn sure not gonna know what that is, okay? We don't need the whole object. We need only a part of it, okay? I don't want to know everything about my girlfriend. I don't care about her mom or her dad or her sister, okay? I just care about what she's gonna do for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay, that was a joke. All right, so let's go back to our code, okay? We do, do we want the whole to-do object on line 10? No. No, we don't. What do we want in this object? We want the body. Exactly, so we just call that body. Very simple. We save it, refresh it, we see it right here, right? But we don't want this all on one line. What do we want? We want, the list. we want it to be a list item. So we're going to make a string using string concatenation. So we're gonna do an H1. Oh, hold on, actually, I want this actually. I want an LI, right? Wait, LI means? List, list oh, item. Uh, because this is called string concatenation. So when you do that, you need the dollar sign. Yes, if I want to use the string concatenation, I have to do this. If I did not use string concatenation, I would have to do this right here. I don't know, you guys decide which one you guys want to do. I don't like it that way. Yes? Does this work? It also works. Works, works. I'm gonna comment this out and do this one, save it, refresh it, also works. Okay, we're using string concatenation. We gotta have a bunch of techniques to, to get our girlfriend to like us. We gotta call her, we gotta buy her flowers, take her to dinner, stuff like that. I don't know, all right? All right, so I prefer line 10, so I'm going to delete this. Okay, so that's not good enough, guys. What else do we need to implement? It's a to-do list, guys. How useful is a to-do list that we can't add anything to? Is that useful? It's that's actually not very useful at all. So we need to implement a function. Luckily, 
Well, not luckily. I decided not to delete the HTML. I want you guys reading this HTML. Okay, this is gonna give you guys some clues. Remember, I keep telling you guys that you guys need to look at your function signatures. Reading code will help you write code. Okay, when I ask you guys questions, you guys need to be reading these these this code. So we're gonna define our function. What's this function gonna be called? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna console.log red computer just to prove that we can get this bad boy to fire. I click it, it fires red computer. Okay, so that's not actually uh, what we want. We don't want a console log. What do we want to do? We want to get, grab the value inside of here, okay? I'm just gonna type this because I've already showed you guys how to do this. You guys should be able to follow along, okay? So we call this one to do input. We're gonna grab the value. We're gonna assign this to a variable called go. And they're just gonna console.log go before we move forward. Okay? We I just call it go because it's easy to type. Okay. Before I give it a reasonable name, I don't want to spend too much time thinking about my variable's name. I just want to see whether or not I capture what I what I want, right? So I save, I refresh, I want to see, I want to see what? Green bag. And we did in fact get green bag. Right? Okay. So, go right now is not a good name. What it would be a good name for this variable? What what's line 21? What am I getting right here? Values. I would say new to do body. Okay? New to do body. And what do we want to do with this, guys? What does it, what represents a to do? Just a body? What represents a to-do? We decided this the first, that's the first thing we did. What is a to-do? It's an object. 100 percent right. So we now need to define new to-do. And it's an object. What keys do each one of our to-dos have to have? Body. Done. Body. Okay, so what is going to go into done? By default, what should a to do be? It should not be done. False should be done. Should be false by default. What should go into body? Yes. Okay. New to do body. Okay. And so after this is done, what if I do console log new to do? What am I going to see here? I'm going to see an object. Yes. I'm going to click hello or click add to do. And we do see, in fact, see this new to do. Right? And I'm about to go show you guys ES6 right now, okay? Guys, please pay attention to this one right now. This is a trick. This is going to make your code cleaner. And I want to see you guys write code like this, okay? Okay, yeah, that's cool. You guys notice right, right here, I have new to do body and I signed it, assigned it to a key called body, right? So here's a pro tip, pro tip right here, right? If I assign this to a variable that I want to call the key, I can just write one thing right here, just like that. Guess what key I will have now? What is new to do body right here? It's a string, right? You probably have to do something like this, right? But if we just put in this key, this, this thing right here, exactly what Sean just said, we're also going to have a key called new to do body, right? Let's go ahead and look at the code. And we also have a key called new to do body and its value is what's inside of here. Okay, I know this is a bit confusing, but the reason why we do this is because we don't want to do what we did on line 25 right here. Ideally speaking, we just want to do body right here, body right here, and delete this line, right? So if I save it now, I refresh, I type in hello world, what keys are, my, are we going to have? We're going to have body. Where does body come from? J JavaScript is smart enough. This is such a common thing that has happened so many times that in ES6, they said, you know what? If someone takes a variable and sticks it in an object and they don't give it a value like we're doing right here, the, the, think about the difference between these two lines, line 23 and line 24. If they just stick the variable in, we're going to assign the key, the name of the variable and its value, what is actually in the va uh, variable. So watch this. I'm sorry, that's a bit confusing. Let's do constant. 
uh, favorite color is equal to red. Okay? So think about this, okay? I could also do, I could do that right there, right? So watch this. Just look what happens on line 26, guys. Okay, what's, what's happening on line 26? We're defining a new key on our to-do, okay? We're, get, we're defining a new key on our object. What is its value? Well, well, what is the actual value? Red. 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 Okay, so let's save it. Let's we'll hop over here. We'll add it to do. Do I have a key called favorite color? Do I have a value called red? Okay, so now let's make this shorter. If I delete it, what's going to happen? Exactly the same thing. I add it. We have a key called favorite color. Its value is red. This is called... What are, you, what are you talking about? Where? Uh, the, what's, what, what the reality, you can understand line 26 is doing this, okay? It's saying, hey, hey, give me a key. Oh, my bad. Give me a new key that is the exact same name of this variable, okay? And inside this key, I want to have the value of what is actually inside of this variable. Pretty simple. Or, you know, that's all that's going on. These both will work just the same, okay? Watch, I'm gonna save it. Someone give me a color. Hey, no, I'm gonna do this. I want you all to participate in this. Maya, give me a number. Uh, uh, Quinn, give me a color or number. Everyone give me a number. Sean. Uh, Parsa. Uh, Tin. Uh, Hang. Uh, Kung. 68. 68. Is that and uh, 11 fun. Okay, obviously favorite color is a stupid name and it's actually not really what's in there. This would be horrible code if I saw you guys write this. Yeah, I'd be yelling at you. So I save, I add, I click. Look at my, my key, favorite color. Do we have a key here called favorite color? Yeah. And what is its value? It's coming from all of you guys. It's coming from right here, right here on line 23. We said, hey, I want a key called favorite color. I want its value to be favorite color. If I comment this out and then I uncomment this one, will the same thing work? I promise you it will work. And we do in fact have this stuff right here. This is called uh, destructuring, okay? ES6 destructuring. You guys are gonna get very familiar with this very soon, as in next week. <laughs> okay, so this is a more advanced technique. I'm, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want you guys to understand what's going on on line 25. What's going on on line 25, guys? Come on, one more time. Last time I asked this before we move on. What's going on on line 24? My bad, 24. Uh, you can grab whatever you got input in. So on line 21, we grab what's in the input. We assign it to a variable called body, okay? We take that body and then we assign it to a key on our new to-do object. What's that key going to be called? Yep, it's gonna be called body. What's its value going to be? What's inside body? Exactly, watch this. Console.log. I'm sorry, this is a this is such a common technique that like I need you guys to understand this. You guys are going to see this, I promise you. Okay, so let's go ahead and we got body, 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 okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do blah, blah, blah. What's our body? This random ass number. And look at this key right here, same value. Okay, all right, so I gave you a quick uh, introduction into ES6. We create a new to-do. All right, well, so what's our next step, guys? We successfully created a to-do object. Hmm, what do we need to do now? Should we just throw it away? No. What do we need to want to do with our to-do object that we just added to our to-do right. list? Show it on the right now. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm asking right now. We're about to do that right now. So let's just look at our to-dos here. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do console.log. Well, what if we console.log Because I'm about to show you guys that we we need to change this to do right here, right? So let's think about this, right? After this function, when we add to do, right? I have a list of three to-dos. I add one. How many should I have? 
Yeah, very simple. I have three to-dos. I add one. I need to have four. Very simple. So let's go ahead and let's just see what happens, right? I'm going to refresh. I'm going to type something in. I click add to-do. How many do I have before? How many do I have after? Did we successfully build a new to-do? Exactly. We didn't add it to our list. So now, where is our list? What is our list called? What's our to-do list called? So what do we need to do on line 25? And what do we want to push? Not any to do. Which to do did we just define? The new, the new one. Yes, the new to do, exactly. Okay. Now I suspect whenever we run this, our after will be exactly one character one number larger than the other one. Okay? So we're gonna save it, we're gonna refresh. I have three to do's. I type in some stuff, I click add to do. How many should I have? I started off with three, I have four. Okay, so now what is the next problem? Do we have four to-dos? Yes, we do have four to-dos, but we did not render it to the screen. And be, I can add, I can add this a thousand times if I want. No, no, watch this. I'm gonna add this a thousand times. Okay, we're gonna refresh. We're gonna type in some stuff. We hit enter. How many to-dos do we have? Why? Because we added a bunch of times like an idiot. Okay, we just a proof of concept. Okay, so the fundamental problem is what. The fundamental problem is refresh, we type in some stuff, we add. The fundamental problem is this. We have three to-dos here. We added a bunch more. Okay? What do we need to do now? The fundamental problem now is that we need to render the screen again. Okay? We updated it in concept. We do understand that we have more to-dos. Now we need to actually update the UI. Okay? So what are we going to do? Because your instructor went ahead and showed you the probably better way of writing code, and they already wrapped it up in a function, all we got to do is call a function. What is our render to-do uh, to list function going to do? What does this do, guys? Come on now. Look at its signature. And just look at this. It's simply going to look at the to-dos, and then it's going to render it to the screen, okay? So after this is done, I'm just simply going to call this function, and I guarantee you this will draw something onto the screen. Okay, so, so, so what, what's going on here? Remember, what was our original problem, okay? Let's think about this. I, I'm, I'm looking at my list. I just add something. Before I had three to-dos, now I have four. Is this true? Is this a true statement? I'm pretty sure it's true, actually. I'm pretty confident it's true. One, two, three, four, why is this? So we have three to-dos. You can look at the array. We, I promise you it had three to-dos when you clicked it, right? When we initially looked at our to-dos on line 19, we had three to-dos in there. On line 20 through 23, we created a new to-do. We defined a new to-do. On line 24, we added our to-do to our to-dos. Okay, we added a new to-do to our to-dos. And then on line 27, we simply looked at our to-dos again. But you guys will notice that despite the fact we're adding to-dos, I can add a thousand of them. What's the problem? I have eight. I have eight to-dos, yet we still have three here. So what is the next step? Updating the UI. Exactly. And what can we do to update the UI? So, how, how, so let's just think about what we have so far. How did this show up in the first place? How did this show up right here? We call, we define a function called render a to-do list. Yeah. This basically mapped over our to-dos. It created some... Yes, and then what did it do here? No, well first we had an array of strings and then we combined them to be one big string and then we stuck it inside of this HTML right here. That's what happened. If I did hello world, right? I save it, it shows up right here, right? So this function fires when? When does render to do list fire? Right now, it fires at the very bottom of our JavaScript because when the app loads, I want the user to see the to-dos, period. Okay, they should always see their to-dos. 
So when the app loads, we render the to-do list. Because whenever we're done reading all these functions, I want the user to see this. If I commented out this function call right here, they load the page, I don't see any to-dos, right? Even though we actually do have some to-dos here, right? So we're gonna call this function on line 30 and it's going to simply render it to the screen for us. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. So since we already went ahead and wrote some good code and we, we put this all together in a function, we don't need to write this code again. All we gotta do is call the function. We call the function again and the to-dos will be different and then it will automatically know what to do. Will this work? Yes, but we will have a problem. It's going to render them all again. Whoop. Oh, my bad, my bad. Damn, yo, every single day I get better at writing code. Okay, now I realize a better way of doing what I've been doing. Holy shit, I wrote this like 30 minutes ago and I had a problem, now, now we solved it. I thought there was gonna be a bug there. Wow, this is amazing. So, so I was expecting that it would add, because remember how a second ago I showed you that it was, it was going to clear, it was going to, uh, it's not going to clear, that it was going to add multiple uh, to-do items again and again and again, right? But then, but I, I was expecting it to show the same to-dos multiple times, right? But then I realized that right now on line 12, we simply target that to-do list right here. What is the to-do list here on line 12? Yes, so the inner HTML function call, it simply replaces everything in there. Before, this is what I was doing. I was saying, hey, do this, make it no. But because we went ahead and did it on line 12, we actually don't need to do that. So let's save it, let's refresh. If I add it to do, it does in fact work. Right, does that work? Okay, so, um, Okay, something I really don't like about this is when I type and I hit add to do, I want this to disappear, right? Isn't that a very normal thing, right? If I go to Facebook and I say, uh, and I message Charles, for example, right? I say Charles, if I type something in here and I hit enter, don't I see this disappear, right, down here? That's the behavior, I hit add to do, I want to see this to do input clear, okay? So what can we do here? Exactly. I can simply copy, copy the targeting here and then set its value to be an empty string. Okay, that's what line 17 is doing. So let's test it. I say uh, demo to-do list. I click add to-do. I expect this to-do list to clear. And it did in fact clear. I comment this out, let's think about this. I type in some stuff, I hit add to do, it adds successfully to our list, but this to do input is not cleared. Right? I want it to clear, that's the expect expectation in terms of behavior. So I'm going to, as soon as I grab the body, I'm gonna say, okay, I got that value now, let's go ahead and clear it. Let's say goodbye to it. So we clear it. Oh, hold on, so 17 cleared the bar. No, so it cl clears the search, um, what's it again? So, so just think about this, okay? Remember, I'm typing here, Blah, 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 blah. I can just do this and say, hello world. Oops. What happened right here? Hello world is there. Foo bar, for example. Foo bar. Oh, okay. And now it's like empty. But, so that's why it just doesn't show anything. Like exactly. I want it to be empty. The user hits enter, it should disappear. Just like any text app, okay. This is a very common, uh, a very common thing that happens, okay. So, um, uh, what do we need to do now? We also need to be able to remove to dos, okay. So, in order to do this, are we going to use perform magic? The answer is supposed to be no, guys. We're going to write code, okay. I'm going to make this an H1 because I want them to make this easier to see. Okay, let's make this an H3. Okay, we have an H3. Now, okay, so we now we have our, our to-dos here. I want us to be able to click a little X right here in order to remove it, okay? So inside this render to-do list right here, what am I gonna do? 
I'm gonna add a I'm gonna add an anchor tag which is on click okay we're gonna make it this here and when you guys I know you if you guys don't remember this then we need to review you, button on it or like icon? you can do more okay I, I need to keep this simple right now like, like we can do we can do a lot more than this uh-huh um I don't think you do to be honest with you href is an anchor a uh, ref is just where it goes so if i type in https oh, uh, okay. www.google.com i type this in i refresh if i click this oh yeah if i click this what's going to happen okay so basically the href means um I don't remember. Reference. It's a reference, but but the H means something. I mean, H means something. Hyperlink reference. Hyperlink reference. Okay. It's saying, hey, go to this URL. That's all it says. But I don't want this ref to actually work. The only thing I want is it to be blue, so users know they they can click on it. So I'm just gonna put a pound in there because I actually don't want it to go anywhere. I just want the users to know that they can click it. Very simple. Hold on, hold on. The hashtag is. It means don't go anywhere. And, and when you stick a hashtag in href, it means I do not want this to go anywhere. I want it to stay right here. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so remember the objective now is to what? Is to remove the to do, right, guys? All right. I, if I click this, I want it to remove the to dos. But let's start small. I'm clicking it. What should we? What we should we? The first thing we should program. Yes, I want to see whether or not we can click. We, we can fire a function. Exactly. So we're going to define a new function on delete. Okay. Oops. We say console.log user wants to delete a to do. Okay. So now what do we need to do? Is writing a function good enough? Is defining a function good enough? No. What else do we need to do? We need to pass it. Exactly. Thank you, Fung, to the on click attribute of this anchor tag. And we also don't want to forget our parentheses. So now my expectation is, if I click this, I should see user wants to delete to do. Okay, we're gonna start small. Before we start worried about uh, deleting it, let's just make sure we can make the function fire. So I successfully got we get, we successfully got this function to fire. So what do we want to do now, guys? We want to remove a to-do based on the index, right? If I click the first to-do, should I be remove the second one? Yeah. If I click the second one, should I remove the third one? Yeah. If I click the first one, first one, which one should I remove? Yeah. How can we know where, where we click? How can we, know, how can we determine which to-do the user clicked, okay? And once again, this goes back to what Sean asked about earlier, the index. We need to know which index. Was it the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? So that being said, when we form this string right here, just like what Sean said a second ago, we need to pass a little bit more data. And specifically, I want you to pass the index, okay? That's the easiest way to do this now. Where can we get the index from? Where is this magical number uh, index gonna come from? Where? Up there. Uh, where's up there? Tell me a line. The math eight okay. next to the to-do. Okay, is it the first one? Is that okay? This is exactly, you want to say right, it has to be the second one. The index will always be the second argument, okay? And the element will always be the first one. So index here needs to go on the right of it, to do. And I promise you this will work. Oh yeah, because it's dependent on the to do. Well, so your arguments are, your, your argument, the signature of your function will determine how it behaves, right? So let's, defer, let's define a new function called say hi, and it takes a name, and it takes a language, okay? Let's think, let's think about how this one was gonna work, okay? So I say, if language is English, and then we'll say console.log, hello plus name. Else we'll say console.log, hello, xin chào, xin chào plus name, okay? I'm gonna copy this bad boy, okay? If I type, type in say hi, right? If I give it, are these exactly the same? Uh, Loy, is Loy going to behave the same thing? At, 
it's, it's, so we see that, look at this, right? I call it a function, I pass it two arguments. It says, hello, Loy, right? If I do this, will it work the same? It'll be sin chow. It'll be sin chow n. Why does that matter? Because the orders of our arguments matter. That's what it boils down to. The order matters, right? If we call, for, so for example, the, the, what we were just talking about a second ago, right? Um, for the map, right? The order matters. There's no simpler, I, I don't know how to explain it. it. The order matters. The expectation in this one, right? And our say hi function, right? The expectation is the first argument is going to be the name. The second argument is going to be the language. There is, there is no other way to call the function. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay? All right. So uh, I forgot where we're at. Um, okay, we're deleting. We're working on deleting. So the first argument that is passed to this function is the to do. The second one is the index. We take this index and we pass it to this on delete function that we just fired. So is our on delete function okay now, or do we need to do more? Look at line uh, 12. Compare that to line 30. Is our on delete function okay? We need to capture the argument passed to it. So I'm going to call this index again, okay? And then we're just going to prove that this one works. We're going to console log the index, okay? We're going to go ahead and update our console log. We're going to say index that the user clicked. Save. I refresh. If I click this, what should we see? If I click the last one, what should we see? Our expectations have been met. We do know what's going on. Okay, so now that we have an index earlier, what did we do? We called a magical function called splice. The first argument of splice is the index. Which element in the index we want to remove? The second argument is how many elements we want to remove. Let me show you what I mean. So let's just say I had a, uh, an, a, an array of people. Say Loy, make fill, okay? If I did people.splice, I started from the one index, I grabbed two. My bad. What would I get? I started, think about it. I started. Loy zero. Yeah, Loy's at zero. I started at the one index, I grabbed two. One, two. Now let's look at people. There's only Loy left. So Splice says, hey, start at a index and remove that many elements afterwards. Okay, let's do this one more time, okay? One more time. Cons, fruits. You gotta, we say ands equals dog, cat, rat, bat, and some other animals. So, I want one with three characters, a really easy one to type. Uh, cat, dog, cat, rat, bat, owl. Uh, what's another one that's easy to type? Come on. I, I, fox. fox. I like that one too, okay. So if we look at ands, how many elements do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? What if I wanted to take off the last two elements? What could I do? Splice. I could do splice. Think about it. We're talking about splice right now, right? What, I want to remove the last two. So what's the first argument going to be? Zero, one, two, three, four. I want it to be four. I want to remove two elements. So I can use two. So now if I look at ants, I, imagine, I expect Al and Fox to be gone. And Al, are, and are Al and Fox gone? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's what, that's what Slice is going to do for us on line 32. Okay? So now that we've removed this element, what is the next step? Yes. Okay? So let's go ahead and prove that. Let's go ahead and reinforce this concept. Okay? Let's go ahead and copy this line. Let's refresh. Go ahead and clear our console logs, right? If I click this button, I went from three elements to two. But what was the problem that we ran into earlier? We need to render it again, okay? And this is actually the same concept as the game. Remember the game is constantly rendering, constantly rendering? Same concept, okay? It's called a, a rendering engine. So now we want to do render to-do list. We want to call that function. 
okay? You go delete this, delete this, clean up our code as we go. You refresh, I click delete, go to school, it disappears. I, cl I click the X on have some coffee. No, I changed my mind, write some code, it disappears. I would add, write some code, it adds. Okay, any questions guys? Okay, so I just wanted, let me finish doing, we have one more step, okay? What's the last thing that we need to do on our to-do list, guys? Toggle. We need to figure out how to toggle this bad boy, okay? What, is it gonna be magic? Or we, what do we need to do, guys? Function. Yes, we need a function, toggle, to do. I, I'm gonna go ahead and do some setup, guys. I want you guys, like, like I'm gonna do setup because like we got to know certain things. We gotta have this, this concept memorized. The concept that I want you to memorize right now is that you cannot toggle to do without knowing what to do. Okay, so I go ahead and just type in index. That's the most important thing right now. I need you to know that when I when this file this function, we have to know which to do it is. So we're just going to do what? We're going to do to do's index. All right? We're going to look at that one to do. Okay. No, 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 no but, but no, it's not going to work now. But but I'm trying to say is that like we need this index. What is the purpose of this index? It doesn't know which to do to look for. There's, there, we kind of five, ten, a thousand to dos. We need to be, be able to identify which to do. Okay. So now I'm going to. Okay. Well, before I console that log, what else do we need to do with this toggle to do right here? How do we fire it? Yeah, I'm gonna add it right here. On click right here. Okay. I'm gonna pass it the index. Oh, that's not good enough. What do I need to use here, guys? We have to be uh, a dollar sign. I need to use string concatenation. Okay, this is this is code. Okay, this is. I don't want you to have to type commas and dollar signs, but if you want to write code, you have to. There's no oh other solution. Sign. Okay, so we've got that to fire. Let's now confirm that we got the index. Okay, let's confirm. I keep jumping ahead of you. I'm sorry, but I want you guys to know that this isn't magic. Okay, I click the zero one, I get zero. I click the one one, I get one. I click the two one, I get two. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this IDX? We're gonna use it to find a to do, no, nothing else. So we're gonna say, hey, to do's, that index, let's console.log and see what's in there. Okay, so let's save. If I click this right here, let's go to school, what do you guys expect to see? You expect to see a, an object. Is it the right object? If I click this one, mm -hmm. it is also the right object. Write some code is also the right object. So remember, when we're toggling, what is the expectation? Hmm. Hmm. We want to toggle it. We want to change it to done, right? So now what we need to do is do what? We want to say, hey, this to do right here? What is this done status? Okay, my bad, my bad. This should be expression. If it is done, okay, my bad, that is an expression, my bad. If it is done, I want to make it false. If it's done, if it's if the to, to do is done, I want it to become false. Otherwise, I want it to be true. We're gonna stick this in here. I, I'm gonna reverse state, right? So if it's this, you reverse it. Exactly, T toggling just means reverse it. If it's on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on. We're toggling it. Okay, so, sorry, I got a burp. So let's think about this, guys, okay? All my to-dos right here are? Okay, what are we doing on line 38? We're saying, hey, if the-do is done, give me a, uh, give me a true, false. If, it's, if it isn't done, give me a true. And then we stick that in a variable called go, and we simply console log it, because I'm gonna prove that this works. I, I anticipate that because these three to-dos are false, they're not done, that no matter what, which one I click, I will find true. It is impossible to do the other thing, okay? So I'm gonna click this, and I in fact see true, okay? So now what we need to do is, we need to look at our to-dos again, that specific to-do, and then we need to set it's done to equal, go. But right now, go is a horrible name. We want it to be new status. Okay, that's probably a more appropriate name, okay? And lastly, what is the next step to do? We want to render it again. Okay. 
So, um, right now, like I kind of, I should have done this first, my bad, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and cinch, make one true to, to done, okay? The reason why I'm doing this is I'm gonna show you a technique and how we can make them look different, okay? The done and not done. So, our H3, we're gonna give it a class, right here. And we're gonna run another ternary operator, okay? We're gonna say, hey, if the to-do is done, we're going to give it a class of done. Otherwise, we're not gonna give it any class at all. Okay, that's what line this is doing right here. So, what does a done class do? If it's done, I'm gonna make it, what color is done, green? Let's just do, let's just do it to how I was doing it. Let's make it a stri strike through, okay? I think this is the most explicit. So I save it, I save it, I expect one of these to have a strike through. Why does this have a strike through right here, guys? But when it's done, what happens in our code? When we're rendering our to-do list, what happens right here on our rendering to-do list? When we're rendering the string, which will be parsed into the HTML, we look at the to-do object. The to-do's object done key, if that key is true, we, uh, we add this done, we return a done string, and we stick it right here. You can imagine it becomes like this. If it is done, it looks like that. If it is not done, it looks like this. I'm gonna to prove to you that's what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna save it, jump over our console. I'm gonna click right here. Is there a done class on this one? Right, there is a done class. If I look at this to, to do and I look at this one right here, there is no done class. Right, okay, and actually I don't want no there, I just want a string, my bad. So that's how we decide how to, to make our to-dos look different, okay? So, that being said, what we were initially doing before, I got a little off topic. We're trying to figure out how to do a toggle it, right? So now, we're just gonna uncomment this, uncomment, we'll save, and I expect when I click this, it should update. Is that working? Amazing. This is JavaScript right here, guys. You can see some JavaScript magic right here. Look at this right here. Oh, fuck it. It renders, it renders the whole thing, my bad. So like, it, it, we can't leave it expanded because we, de we delete everything and then we, de we add it all again. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's our, that's our lab. I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh... Okay, 